Hello everyone, this is Dragons After Dark, and welcome to the Pet Battle Report, your weekly news and information source for all things Pet Battle. Today we're going over pet breeds and stats and what they mean for you. We also received news from Blizzard about the Diablo 4 event, and I'll also touch on what you need to know about the Whelp Daycare coming in 10.1.5. Before we get into that though, let's go over everything going on this week on Azeroth and Beyond for your pets. As always, starting off with the Shadowlands, we have the Necrolord Assault until Friday evening reset, giving you the chance to craft Lil A-Bomb, who seems to have lost bits of themselves everywhere, and a chance to receive fodder from the Assault Cache. Once that switch is over, we'll be working with the Kyrian, where you can make progress on your A Sly Fox achievement to receive the pet Sly, check to see if the Sinfall Screecher treasure is up, and have a chance to receive the Copperback Aether Worm from the Assault Cache. Moving on to BFA, the islands for the week are Skittering Hollow, Crestfall, and Rotting Mire, while the Salvage are Snow Blossom, Ungol Ruins, and the Verdant Wilds. As for Enzoth Assault, he's hanging out in Uldum this week, which means we have a chance for the Pyre of the Amalgamated One bonus objective to spawn, which spawns a rare, who in turn has a chance to drop the Wicked Lurker battle pet. So keep an eye out on the daily reports to see if the Pyre is up. Heading back one more expansion to Legion, we have the quest Out of the Frying Pan in Dalaran from Darinus the Learned, which begins a short quest chain that rewards the Wormy Tunkins pet. This quest will last for two weeks, so until reset on the 30th for NA and 30th for EU. This quest is completable once per character and is up about twice a year, so don't miss out on getting this really handy pet. This week we have Cataclysm Time Walking, and you're not going to want to miss out on the Firelands Time Walking Raid. If you haven't already farmed the components for your Wishwing pet, you'll need to head in and kill Elysrezor for a Glittering Phoenix Ember. And the kicker is this will only drop on the Time Walking version. This means if you miss this week, you'll need to wait around until the next time Cataclysm Time Walking is up on rotation. You can also expect boss drops from the raid with the Blazehound, Cinderweb Recluse, Infernal Pyroclaw, and Surger, but you don't have to time walk raid for those beauties, you can just pop into the normal raid for an easy clear. As for the vendor, we have the usual strand crawler dropping from the bag of fishing treasures, which you can purchase for 150 time warped badges each. Also, don't forget if you still need to complete your Rock Lover achievement to get the Battle Pet Pebbles, Remti and I hold on to the daily so we can share it with others. Just hop on Discord and ping Remti for EU and me for NA. Keep in mind you do need to have the Therizane dailies unlocked and you can't be in Deep Home when we share it. For EU folks, you'll want to set your clocks on Saturday the 27th because it's Squirt's Garrison Leveling Day. While it's not during Critter Week, it's still great to help you chew through that leveling roster for the new 10.1 pets. I'll link the Zufu's Power Leveling Guide in the description for anyone interested in participating. I wasn't sure where to fit this in, but since it's an event that spans across the next few weeks, here's as good as anywhere. Blizzard made the official announcement today for the Greedy Emissary event that begins tomorrow. In a classic homage to Diablo, World of Warcraft is holding a special in-game event with hellish rewards. One of those rewards is the pet Belial, which is arguably a more useful version of the much-loved Ball. Unlike Ball, Belial's abilities could see our current beloved demonic goat foisted from its supreme position of power among the ranks of must-have pets. There's no word yet on what the drop rates will look like, so keep a sharp eye out for the treasure goblins and get your alt army ready just in case. And that's it for the weekly news. Before we get into talking about breeds and stats, let's look at the pet chosen by the random pet button on Warcraft Pets for this week, the Flare Youngling. Its flavor text reads, A brash, fell orc once tried to enslave these critters as his personal soldiers. Pieces of him are still scattered across Outland. Hailing from Outland on the mountain border between Hellfire Peninsula and Terracar Forest, this pet is marked as having high utility on Zufus, featuring in a lot of humanoid family strategies. 
I would wager that its usefulness falls somewhere right behind the Anubisath Idol and the Winter Helpers. It only comes in one skin, but 10 breeds. This means finding the breed you're looking for can take some time, and you'll need to be patient. There are only two breeds of the Youngling that really matter, the SS or Pure Speed and the PP or Pure Power. If you only want one of these little guys, definitely go for the SS breed. There are very few situations where having the upper hand on speed won't benefit you. The power breed is far more niche in the strats that call for it, so maybe save farming one of them if it comes up in a strat and you have no other alternatives. The other breeds for this pet are mostly filler. If 325 speed doesn't quite cut it for you, focus can also help give you an extra 25% to your speed, hit, and crit if you don't need deflection. However, deflection is a big draw for this pet, which helps you avoid those big hits. As long as I'm not fighting beasts, I prefer to have Blitz slotted because Triple Snap functions like Slicing Wind, and I am not about that RNG. In general, your last slot will be for Rampage, but if you have the SS breed, you can make use of Kick's Interrupt effect. And that's going to be it for the Flare Youngling and our pet spotlight for the week. Now let's talk about breeds. I chose this topic for the week because I received a comment on my most recent pet collecting around Azeroth and Beyond video. Justin Terrell said, Pet breeds? I never knew WoW pets had breeds. Which is completely understandable because it's an easy bit of information to miss. The default UI and even rematch do not display pet breeds without the use of an add-on. I use Battle Pet Breed ID, which I will link in the description below. It will display the breeds in a letter slash letter format, which is the easiest to read. There are some add-ons that will display symbols like arrows for speed and heart for health, but I personally find the letter formats leave little to no room for confusion. So what are breeds? From Zufu's article on the topic, breeds determine the weight of your pet's stats. There are 10 different possible breeds, and the breeds are usually displayed as two letters. There's a table for the distribution of points in the Zufu's article, which I'll also link below, but we won't need to go quite that in-depth. As I stated in my pet collecting videos, most pets are filler, so the breed isn't super important. You can always go back and catch another if you find you need a different one, so don't stress too much about it. However, something to keep in mind for wild pets, which are the most likely to have multiple breeds, is that you can change the quality of the pet with blue stones to make your pet rare, but you cannot change the breed of your pet. And Zufus also says, knowing about breeds is useful, but not essential. Without an add-on or knowing anything about breeds, you can defeat tamers, gain achievements, and win fights against other players. If you want to follow specific strategies, like many on Zufus, you might run into some that have breed requirements essential for the strategy to work. In addition, it can make fights a lot easier if you have better fitting breeds. That being said, what you really need to know is what those letter combinations stand for and what breed you might want to keep an eye out for if a pet has multiple. For the letters, we have H for health, S for speed, P for power, and B for balance. Pure breeds are like the ones I mentioned before with the Flare Youngling, like the PP and the SS. Some people have fancy terms for them, like the Ninja for the pure speed breed, but generally I'll just call them pure speed or pure power. Pure health, or H slash H, generally isn't sought after. The best way to tell what breed you want for a pet is by looking at their moves. If they have moves like dodge, burrow, bubble, counterspell, clobber, wind buffet, flurry, or other avoidance, block, interrupt, stun, force swap, bonus hit when faster moves, speed is probably going to be your go-to. Think of the generic bunny move set. They have dodge and burrow, which helps them avoid enemy attacks, and they get a potential bonus bonus hit with flurry when they're faster, so they work best in breeds that have a lot of speed. Same goes for the new pet Primal Stormling. They have a stun and a force swap that share a slot, and their speed comes in at over 300. This makes it faster than quite a few enemies and allows it to stun or force swap before the enemy can use a move you don't want them to. Now if they don't have moves that generally benefit from speed, you'll probably want to look at power breeds, especially if they have big hit abilities like Sandstorm or investment effects like Curse of Doom. More power equals a bigger number and all that jazz. To give you an example, let's take a look at one of the new pets in Zerilek, the Rock Martin. It comes in three breeds, SS, HH, and HS. The power stat is the same across all three breeds, 
but when we look at its moveset, it has Blinding Poison and Lift Off. Both of those abilities work best when you're faster and can time when to use them. Therefore, it'd be best for the Rock Martin to be in the SS or Pure Speed breed. For some pets, it won't be quite that obvious. Sometimes pets have horrible stat matchups with their abilities, like slow pets with interrupt abilities that only work when they're faster. Other times, all the stats will be so close, it won't matter what breed you get until a perfect strat comes along that needed the pet's breed that has three more speed than the one you captured. That can be a whole mood, especially when doing family battler fights. Though as I said, a lot of pets are filler so whatever breed you end up with will probably be fine. And if you do want to catch a particular breed, but don't know which one you should go for, I'll link Grania's breed survey in the description to steer you in the correct direction, or if it's for a particular pet, you can go to the pets page on Zufus and it'll show you the breakdown of what percentage of profiles have which breeds for that pet. Or if there's a pet you want to ask about that isn't on the list or doesn't have a lot of info on Zufus, feel free to leave a comment here or pop into the Warcraft Pets or Zufu's discords and ask. Before we move on to the Whelp daycare info, let's go over our strategy spotlight for the week. I was running around the Dragon Isles and verifying strategies in Zufu's when I came across a strategy by Jimmy John for Paws of Thunder in the Oniron Plains. What I really liked about it was it didn't give you sure a chance to use decoy, and if there's anything that makes me happy, it's not letting the enemy pets do what they want. It uses pets that don't get much fight time with the Abyssal Slitherling with a power stat greater than 300, the Sunscale Hatchling, and the Corthic Swarmling. Overall, it was sleek, enjoyable, and only 10 rounds. So I'd like to give a big thank you to Jimmy John for making my afternoon with this enjoyable strat. I'll link it below for anyone interested in taking a look. Now what you've all been waiting for, Dragon Babies! The Whelp Daycare is a series of dailies and quests coming in 10.1.5 that will reward us with pet items and pets. I have a sneaking suspicion that every pet we've seen so far will be tied to the Whelp Daycare in some way with one left over. We'll be getting the Whelps as non-combat pets, but the Whelps will also be getting their own pets, of which your character will receive a copy. For example, Iggy the Rock Elemental will be the Obsidian Whelps pet, and I didn't get as far as late but I believe Princess Borquistraza will be the Ruby Whelps pet. If I had to guess, I'd say Anuna the Swaglet looks like they'd match well with the Bronze Whelp, Palabras the Tome might go to the Azure Whelp, and based on the name, I'd say Somnius the Bear will be with the Emerald Whelp. It looks like each whelp will take about 4-5 to five days for completion of their chains, and once you've done all the quests, you'll receive Axel for the achievement. Welp, there it is. There will also be quests for the Daycare Derby, which does not currently have a reward, but there are four other models like Axel that don't have a source yet. Overall, I like this story mode of pet collecting. I know it would get tedious to collect every pet in this fashion, but I'm glad to see they did it again after Jaihana's quest chain. The Whelp Daycare reminds me of the Shadow Barb Hatchling from Uldum, but since it's split between five Whelps, it feels faster, even though it probably won't be. I'll link the Zufu's 10.1.5 compilation article in the description where I'm recording each activity of the day for the Whelp Daycare. Given what we know so far, is this type of pet collecting something you'd like to see more of for pet battles? As long as they don't go overboard, of course. But other than that, you might want to keep an eye on the article just for certain items that might come up that you'll need for quests. So far, I've had to use a cooking recipe to make duck to feed one of the whelplings, things of that nature. As we get more information, the article will be updated, so just check back occasionally to see if there's something you can get ahead of time before the auction house prices spike. <laughs> you know how it goes. Anywho, that's going to be it for me this week. I'll have all the pertinent links available on my tweet for the podcast, as well as in the description once it's uploaded to Spotify and YouTube. Until next time, I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day or night, and happy battling!